Come with me to Isaiah 54. It says, Shout for joy, O barren one, you who have borne no child. Break forth into joyful shouting and cry aloud, you who have tra not travailed. For the sons of the desolate one will be more numerous than the sons of the married woman, says the Lord. Now, one of the most powerful ingredients that the, church, the leaders of the future must have on the inside of their heart is the power of sight. What you see in the spirit, your perception of what the spirit of God is doing inside you. If you, don't, if you cannot capture that and decipher what is taking place on the inside of your heart, you cannot be current in the move of God. Eli the priest, he looks at, Eli the priest looks at, at uh, Hannah. And he begins to see Hannah beginning to pray. But he didn't understand what was taking place in her heart. He said, woman, why are you drunk at such an early hour? She said, sir, I'm not drunk. It's a travail in my soul. Then he took a step backwards and said, oh, really, I didn't know that. There are so many leaders who are unable to decipher what is taking place in the hearts of, his, of, the, of God's people. They cannot focus. They cannot see. They cannot understand what God is doing in their hearts because they cannot understand what God is doing in their own lives. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 11, I think in verse 23. Let me try to confirm that verse for you. Acts 11. I think it's in verse 23. He says, when Barnabas, when he arrived, he witnessed the grace of God and he rejoiced and began to encourage them with Encourage them all with resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. What did, what did Barnabas see? He saw the grace of God operating in people's lives. He could witness the grace of God. He could read. He could decipher. He, he, could, he could monitor what was taking place in the lives of God's people. And he worked with it. Are we hearing me? He worked with it. He was not just preaching to them, not knowing what God was doing. No, he witnessed the grace of God. He saw what God was doing in their midst. He saw how God was moving. He worked alongside with God. God was there moving and he worked alongside. See, this is what happens. You and I as leaders, we must begin to decipher what God is doing on the inside of our spirit. Something must happen deep in your heart. You must get a revelation of what is taking place inside. The frequencies that are changing inside you. Look at this. While you're here in the school for two weeks, the Holy Ghost is going to work in your heart. Is that right? The Holy Spirit is going to work in your spirit. He's going to tune your spirit. He's going to cause your spirit to change the frequency from AM to FM. God is going to change your frequency from AM to FM. If you're AM, there's a certain kind of wavelength. There's a certain kind of reception that comes along you. FM you can't receive. All right, you cannot receive FM because you are AM station. But God will do a work inside your heart until you begin to pick up a new, new, new ability. You have a power to receive a new frequency. It changes your, your, your reception area. God gives you a new reception inside your spirit. And so from then on, you are no longer tuned to AM. You're tuned to FM. You're operating on another frequency and things will begin to happen. So everything that is coming by FM, you will pick it up. Anywhere in the world, you pick it up. Why? Because you have been you've been trained. See, the broadcasting stations in the world, they have a certain range. But the one from heaven has no range. It covers all the earth. That's why you can be in Timbuktu for, that, for all that matters. You can be in Middle East. It doesn't matter. You could be in Russia. You could be in any part of the world. God's uh, beaming lights will be sent to you and you'll be able to pick it up from anywhere. In the midst of the jungles of South America, you can still pick up whatever the Holy Ghost is doing and saying. Why? Because your frequency is tuned to the dimension to hear what the Holy Ghost is declaring. That's why the Bible says, if you receive a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. Not his prophecy, but a prophet. If you receive the man, because God uses man to tune another man. Are you listening? God uses man to tune another man. So God makes the man first, one man, and then he uses that man to tune everybody else. So he becomes the, the, the instrument, the model by which God tunes everybody. That's why all my sons will hear what I'm hearing. When I, when I send my letters to them, my newsletters to them, they read it and say, yeah, that's what God is speaking in my heart. Why? Because they are having the same frequency, they should be hearing the same sound. People said to me, well, well, you're an apostle here. How can you cover people in other nations of the world? It is not covered by natural. 
My job is to tune them into the same frequency so I can put my son in Los Angeles and he will hear what God is hearing. I can minister in the spirit and communicate with him things that you and I can never have as natural father and sons. Why? Because I have already put the seed on the inside of them. That seed will continue. Are you listening? That seed is continuing. You don't have to keep putting new seed into the ground. You just get God to keep watering the seed that you've already planted. If, but you have never planted, then you cannot water anything. But you have planted it, then all you got to do is put in water, put in the fertilizer, put in the nourishment, they will continue to grow. That's why in these two weeks, I take my job seriously to put into you a dimension of the spirit that will begin to cause something to happen deep inside your heart. From then on, we are, we are connected. Whatever I'm connected to, you're connected to. Wherever you go, you will hear what I'm hearing because we're all receiving from the same broadcasting station. So if there's something live from heaven coming out, all of us will receive it because all of us are tuned to the same dimension of the Spirit. Can you say amen to that? That's why God said to this woman, shout aloud. Because what I'm doing in your heart is that I'm getting you ready to, you know, to outrun everyone who has started before you. They may have children before you. They may marry before you and have children before you, but the, the child of the, uh, the unmarried woman, the barren one, is going to be far more numerous than the ones that are natural. That's why I said to you, the dimensions of the spirit will overtake the dimensions of the natural. You look at Jacob, for example. Jacob was in the womb. Esau was in the womb. Both of them were fighting to come out first. Are you listening? Sometimes by natural, by natural life, we are handicapped. Maybe by natural life, we don't have everything that is needed. Are you listening like Jacob? By natural, we, we don't have everything that is needed. But by the spirit, Jacob was always a fighter. He held the heels of his brother. And when his brother came out, he pulled himself out. But inside his spirit, there was always this desire to outrun his brother, to outrun the natural. So even in the natural, he didn't have the birthright, but he, he connived. There was something driving inside him to overtake his brother. Are you with me? That's why I'm telling you, if God put that dimension on the inside of your heart, there is no way at any point that you will be left behind. You will always overtake what has started before you. You will always outrun. That's why, you know, at the end of the day, you don't, have to, you don't have to fear. Your portion can never be taken away. Are you listening? Your portion cannot be taken away. If God wants you to win the race, you're going to win the race. Somewhere along the line, you're still going to win the race. Why? Because that's what God wants you to do. There is a drive on the inside by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look on the inside. He said to the barren woman, look at what is on the inside. Shout for joy. People will be thinking, why are you shouting for joy? Because you saw something in the spirit that nobody else has seen. That's why the first joy is you to discover what's inside your own heart. Nobody is going to shout at you. Nobody is going to shout for you. You got to shout for joy by your own self because you discover what God is placing on the inside of your spirit. That's why that joy of the Lord is your strength. Are you listening? But sometimes our mind outweighs everything. Our mind is thinking, no, I can't. I don't do this. I don't have that. And, and, and you kill yourself. You depress yourself. And you have no right to do that. Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You have no right to do that. You cannot destroy yourself. You cannot intimidate yourself. You cannot keep cutting yourself down. Why? Because you're God's chosen instrument. It's not humility. It's stupidity. Are we hearing? It's stupidity to keep on saying you are no good. You are this. I, I'm the weak in my father's family. I, I'm, my father's family is the least. And you got to keep shutting yourself down when the Holy Spirit is all the while wanting to push you up higher and stronger and stronger. It's wrong for you to keep hitting yourself unnecessarily. We learned that in the, in, from the dark ages. It's called flagellation. What is, what is it called? Flagellation. Beating yourself to death. Punishing yourself. Some wives punish themselves, some husbands punish themselves, some children punish themselves. Some parents look miserable more than the misery requires. All the while having a sad face, miserable face. They just have an unfortunate face, that's all. They just want to look miserable, just to let God know they are sorrowful. God don't want you to behave that. Are you listening? If he is going to forgive you, he's going to forgive you. You don't have to kneel over 175 footsteps. Are you listening? You don't have to crawl up the stairway in order to just show your repentance. If you're repentant, it will show. 
I said, if you're repentant, the fruits of repentance will show it up. But you see, for, for, the, for that dark age, dark age church, it's different. You have to flagellate yourself. You've got to harm yourself. You've got to bruise yourself. You, you've got to pay penance. No, you can't do that. Because that's how the Catholic religion brought destruction to the church. Are you listening? So many of us pick up this kind of behavior. Even in paganism, they continue this way too. I know in paganism, that's how they behave. They got to look sad. That's why when they come, they got to look miserable. They got to hit themselves. They got to, you know, hit their breasts. They got to they look, de look, look depressed. They got to look sad. So God will now be happy to receive them. No, that's not true. The more miserable you look, more sad, more you grieve the Holy Ghost. Because he has done so much to keep you happy. Let's put a smile on your face. I said, put a smile on your face right now because that's what it needs to happen. You got to put, put a smile on your face. You, you know, you got to be cheerful. You got to know that what is on the inside. The day you see it, you will never allow anybody to knock you off. Are you listening to me? The day you see it, that's why you got to see what is inside your spirit. All right, come with me to the book of Romans before we go to talk to Abraham. Come with me to the book of Romans, chapter 8. In verse 18, Romans 8, 18. Romans 8, 18. He said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. Now, these two verses are so important that if you can understand these two verses, you can see why all of creation is waiting. Are you listening? If you can understand these two verses. But I want you to look in verse 18 again. He said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present moment are not worthy to be compared. You cannot consider unless you can compare. Are you listening? You cannot consider unless you can compare. If you can compare two things, then you can make a right decision. What are the two things? One is suffering. The other is the glory that is to be revealed to us. Which way is that glory that is going to be revealed to us? Christ in us is the hope of glory filling the whole earth. The Bible says what? He says the glory is to be revealed to us. You must see this glory that's on the inside of you. When that glory is revealed to you, you're prepared to suffer for anything. Are you listening? You're prepared to sacrifice anything. You're prepared to give up anything. You're prepared to labor in any direction. You're prepared to give up your whole life because you've seen that glory of God. When that glory is revealed to you, are you listening? Then you can compare. And because you can compare sufferings and glory, you will choose to suffer together with Him. Why? Because now you have considered this is better. Are you listening? And it's for this reason the anxious longing of creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. So all of creation wants you to compare and consider and see the glory. They're waiting eagerly for you to make the right decision. But you know our problem is all we see is wrong. He is wrong, she is wrong, they are wrong. God is wrong. His word is not right. Everything is wrong. All we see is that. Why? Because there is something that is going wrong on the inside of our spirit. If we can see it settle in our hearts and, and we can see that glory, then all of creation will be set free. Things around about our life will change. Things around about our life will be set free from corruption. Why? Because you have come to your stature and you have come to your position. You are taking over and everything will subject itself to the government of God establishing in your life. The only reason why things are going wrong is nothing has been going right inside you. But the day the things happen right inside you and God's government is established, everything will fall in place. When your obedience is complete, we are ready to punish all disobedience. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, that's what we read. You remember that in verse 6? He said, we are ready to punish all disobedience. When your obedience is complete, we are ready to punish all disobedience. When you and I come into under the government of God, 
And we see this glory. We see God establishing His glory. We see His glory come down and inside this temple. We see His power manifest. His government manifest. We see His life to full maturity. When that begins to happen, then everything else is going to come down. When man is redeemed, the land is redeemed. Are you listening? So don't try to bring the mountain down. Bring the God of creation in. Because no mountain will listen to you because you didn't create it. I said, don't talk to the mountain. Instead of fighting what is outside, bring the right one in. Bring the God of creation in. He will know what to do. Are you listening? Jesus was in the boat. He was asleep. Is that right? He was asleep. The boat began to be tossed by the strong waves. Peter tried to wake him. He said, don't you care for us? Listen to me, my friends. As, as long as you and Jesus are quarreling in the boat, as long as you and Jesus are continuing an inner storm, as long as you and Jesus are not connecting well, the storms will continue to have power over your boat. Are you listening? As long as you and Jesus are not connecting, you are arguing with him, you're fighting with him. You say, don't you care for us, don't you? As long as you and Jesus don't work hand in hand together, the storms outside will get greater and greater and greater. But the day you and Jesus partner together, storms outside will come to an end. Are you listening? When Jesus stood up and he stopped the storms, they said, what kind of a man is this? You just got to find out what kind of a man is inside you. That's why your storms continue. Because you're never partnered with this man who is on living on the inside of you. That is the life of God that's on the inside of you. Stop, stop thinking the devil has so much power. It's just that you're not using what is yours. If you use what is yours and you connect with Jesus, then the storms outside will come to an end. Amen. All the outside struggles is nothing compared to the internal struggles. The day internal struggles come to an end, everything will cease. I said everything will cease. Believe me, you, everything will cease. Every attack of the enemy on your life will cease. Every financial strain will cease. Every kind of demonic attack. Why? Because what God has blessed, the devil cannot curse. When you and I are joined to the head, there is a life of God flowing from heaven. There is a government of God flowing from heaven. Hell cannot invade that place anymore. The devil can come and he can see, but he cannot touch it. Why? Because God and that person is connected. That's why, Jake, that's why Job could not be touched at all by the enemy. Because God and him were connected. They were partners together because it was God who blessed everything that he had. It was God who blessed his land, his property, his possession. He was God who was building the hedge around about him. But Jake, what Job was righteous. He was blameless. He was walking uprightly before God. But God and him were partners. That's why the devil could not touch Job. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? That is the reason why you must begin to understand this. Everything around about you will begin to change. You must see what God is doing on the inside of your heart. All right? You find that Eli could not decipher what was taking place. He didn't know what was taking place. You see, the, the leadership of the past will ne are not able to decipher and understand what God is doing in the temple. That's why they can, cannot be in the current move of the Holy Ghost. They cannot lead the present day church. Because they look at our lips and they think we are drunk. But there's an agony in our soul. There is a passion in our lives. But they cannot understand what we're going through. They think we are proud. They think we are, we, 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 we are crazy. We think that we just want to do it because we just want to show off. No, we are not showing off. All my life, while I was in the denominational church, all my life, you know, every time that I receive a prophecy, say, yea, the Lord will say unto you, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. When I look up, it was only the mighty hand of man. I was so sad. I was 16 years of age. You know, I, I, I was there just for about a year and a half. Every kind of person was beginning to attack me. Leadership. I was beginning to prophesy. The next week, the pastor was preaching seven ways how to judge prophecy. There was nobody else prophesying. So what are they judging? Me. I was only 16, man. I'm telling you, it was not easy to face religious leaders at the age of 16. That's a tender age. 
You want love at that time, but all you get is hate. I've been thinking, how am I going to rise? You know, and I, I, by the time I was 17, 18, it, it was, the pressure was too much. I went, I went before God. I was crying at the beachfront, and I, I spoke to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is this? I am trying to do my best. I receive revelations. I receive prophecy. I receive a revelation that the building next door is going to become a temple. If we don't pray, the temple is going to come and locate itself just beside us. So I went and told the pastor. I was booked. None of the prophets in town could confirm it. That was bad. Everybody said, this is false prophecy. So I had to repent and gather all the leaders and I have to say sorry. Two months later, there was a temple. A temple made so much noise, so much sound, they had to shift. The temple became located there. I'm thinking, like, what am I going to do? I went to God, I cried out, I said, God, I need help. And God opened up his dictionary and he explained to me two words. I said, totally set me free. Pride and boldness are two different things. Sometimes we are misconstructed because we are bold, we are courageous, we are, we are thought to be proud. No, my friends, you better know inside your own heart, in your own conscience, what you're doing is right or wrong. Your conscience will tell you. God had to teach me at that moment of time how to listen to my own spirit, how to listen to what God was doing in my heart. I, that's the time I learned to follow what is on the inside. But what the Holy Ghost was doing, what he was stirring in my heart. And I learned to follow, follow the waves. Follow, follow the waves. God would take me out. You know, at the age of 18, 19, I would learn how to put chairs together. And I, and, and I would sit down by the beachfront. And I, I, I would put a few stones there. And I would be speaking to them. I'll be preaching. Because these are waves that are coming. Nobody will hear you. Are you with me? Nobody's going to hear you. Why? Because you're in, the open, you're in the open sea. So the more you speak, the less, you know, the sound is carried out into the sea. So I will be preaching. I'll be preaching to those stones. I put some shells out there and that's my congregation. I'll preach and preach and preach. And then I begin to feel something in my heart. I feel excited by preaching this particular message. I keep on preaching, keep on preaching until I feel no more excitement with this message. Then I shut this message down and I turn it to another subject. Then I get preaching. Then I'll go on for another 10, 15 minutes or so. I just, just use everything that I know, whatever came to me, and I'll preach it. And then after a short while, I'll have, you know, the thing subsiding. I'll learn that it's high tide, that is low tide in the spirit. When you get excited, there's a wind of the spirit carrying you. When you're not excited, there's no wind. You are trying to carry yourself. You cannot fly. Then when I started the church, the same experience came to me. I, somebody gave us 22 chairs when we started the work in Moa. So I put empty chairs, shut all the doors, and I preach. When you have no congregation, you can preach anything. <laughs> Nobody there to listen to you. So yeah, I preach on faith. I began to preach on faith. That was really my favorite subject. I preach on faith like a house on fire. Then after about 15, 20 minutes, then I change. Then my favorite subject came in, prophecy and end times and, 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 and the last, last days. And I began to preach. And after a show, about 20 minutes or so, I lost steam. Then I got something else. Then I began to preach on signs, wonders, and miracles. And that was literally a favorite subject. I went on preaching and preaching. And then something, there was nothing there anymore. Then I changed subject. I learned to flow with what was going up, what was going down, what was going up. I learned to flow with the tide of the spirit. That's when I begin to understand, friends, that there's something on the inside that you've got to learn to follow. If you don't follow this, you can never become a great leader. Why? Because you cannot go out there waiting for somebody to create waves for you. You've got to have a river flowing on the inside of your own life. You've got to develop and form this dimension on the inside of your spirit. Why? Because it is this that will carry you. Not people. Sometimes you go into the nations of the world, they don't even have a good worship service. They don't sing songs right. They don't have the organized situation organized right. Everything is in chaos. How are you going to have the flow of the Spirit? And then to get a word because the music is nice and, and now you got a word because the worship service is good. There is nothing there. There is no worship. There is no service. Everything is confusion. 
How are you going to go? You got to go by the life of the spirit on the, on, on the inside. When you begin to rise up in the spirit, people said, how can this man rise out of nothing? You can stir yourself up in the most holy faith. You can stir the gift of God and begin to rise up. And that's what God is looking for. A generation of people who have something in, built into them. They're not waiting for anything else, but they can soar when they desire. They can move forward when the Holy Spirit is working deep on the inside of their heart. My friends, if it is this power that you and I must possess. It is this, this dimension and this grace that we must have. Turn to John chapter 4. The book of John chapter 4. In a moment we will come to see Abraham. John chapter 4. This is an important time. I said this is an important time. These are important lessons. There are very few schools in the, in, 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 in the world that begin to teach you things like this so that you've got to take it and use it. God will put you in a cutting edge of leadership. In the future, you will be a man that can affect the entire city and you'll be a man that will affect the entire region. Why? Because God can put inside you the ingredient to change everything around about. You believe that? Yes. Talk to me. Do you believe that? Yes. John chapter 4. Jesus began to speak to this woman. If you look in John chapter 4 verse 10. If you knew the gift of God and who is it who is saying to you, give me a drink, you shall ask of him and he would give you living water. He says, sir, in verse 11, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then would you get this living water? Are you greater than our father? And then Jesus says in verse 13, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give to him shall never thirst. But the water I give him shall become in him a well of water springing up unto eternal life. Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, and who is it that is talking to you? If you knew the gift of God, and who is it that is talking to you? You would have asked him for water. He would have given you living water. Are you listening? God would desire to put something on the inside. He can give us living water. And the living water that he is going to put on the inside, from the outside, that he is putting on the inside of you, shall become in you a well. What is well for? To sustain a whole family. To sustain the whole neighborhood. If you come from villages, you know one well is good enough for their entire village. Everybody draws water. It is the personal water that God gives to you. Become a well for everybody around about you. Are you listening? The water that I give to you shall become in you a well. So you're going to start to feed more people. You're going to start to affect more people. You're going to start to minister to more people. So the lives of people can be greatly affected because of what you carry. Oh, is there an amen in the house? I say about what you carry. All right, about what you put on the, what God put on the inside. So Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who is it that's speaking to you? So it is coming through what God is giving as a gift. I say it's coming to us as a gift of God. God's going to put this gift on the inside. He is going to package it. He's going to put it inside. But it's also going to come when he said, if you knew the gift of God and who is it that is speaking to you, there is a who who must be speaking to you and communicating to you and talking to you that by his word, by what he is saying, water is going to be found on the inside of you. Are you with me? Talk to me. Are you with me? I want you to come with me. Well, you put your hand here in John chapter 4. Come with me to the book of Genesis chapter 3. Now that you are flowing with my spirit, I can see yes and amen and hallelujah. That's good because that's how frequencies operate. If not, you're dull. Everything I say, like you have to think twice. Are you listening? Everything I say, you're like, think twice. What is he saying? Well, what does it mean? Really? Ah, ah, ooh, ah, eh, oh. And that's how donkey sound. But by the, by the time you get changed, you said, amen, hallelujah. Man, that's when the sheep actually. So you move from a donkey to become a sheep. All right, you didn't know that. All right, I hope, I hope even the jokes are properly translated. All right, so that the Swiss people can be not just be cautious and but they will laugh. All right, okay. I don't see anybody laughing. Everybody's looking so serious. They're fixed in their smiles just like the mountains of Switzerland. All right. All right, the book of Genesis, chapter 3. You must remember, Jesus said that if you knew the gift of God and who is it that's speaking to you, you would ask him for 
water and he would have given you living water. So for all that we are asking, God's offer is always greater than we can ever ask or think. According to the power that works within us. All right, that's the next scripture we're going to go. But let's look at this. In Genesis chapter 3. If you look in verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And a man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. This is a king who is supposed to rule. Now he's hiding in the bushes. Are you hearing me? He's to be the prince. But now he's hiding in the bushes. And the Lord called to the man and said to the man, where are you? God is still calling man and asking, where are you? Are you hearing me? He's looking for man. He's calling, where are you? And I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And the Lord said to him, who told you? Who told you that you were naked? There is a who, when he partake from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there was a who that started to communicate to him. Are you listening? Yes. If he had listened to God, then he was partaking from the tree of life. When he was listening to the devil, he was partaking from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What he didn't know that every day in the cool of the morning or the cool of the day, God will come down and he represented the tree of life. But the devil would come along and he was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Man had a choice between two portions. But man chose to take from another who? Another person to receive the feeding from. If you knew the gift of God and who is it that's speaking to you, you would ask him for water. He would have given you living water. If we partake from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the who who is going to speak to us is called the devil. The devil is going to communicate to us. And what is he going to put into us is going to change our nature. And man who was created in the image and likeness of God became born again and became satanic nature. Because he listened. All right, He took the word and the nature begins to form. If you read in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. He said, by partaking these great and magnificent promises, we partake divine nature. Is that true? And by partaking divine nature, we escape the corruption that is in the world. So if we partake God's word, if we partake what God is giving, then divine nature is formed on the inside of us. Amen? There is an input that produces that. There is a life that comes from the outside and that life is formed on the inside. And Jesus said, when you receive this water, it will become in you a well. Are you listening? If you receive what he's saying, if you receive what he's telling you, you will receive water and that water will become a well that can be contained for the rest of them. And then in John chapter 7, in verse 37, he says, the water within you shall spring up and shall become like rivers of living water now you're no longer just talking about ministering to the village now whole civilizations are built around rivers are you listening to me whole civilizations are built around rivers see a well can only touch a village but a river is flowing through many 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 villages and so many civilizations civilizations can form around the rivers because there is water there is life there is transportation there is you know there's transfer of goods and trade and all these wonderful things will begin to happen why because the river of god is flowing through it is a river that makes glad the city of god can you say amen to that it is a river that makes glad the city of God. I believe very strongly that God wants us to understand this. That's the reason why there is a dimension of the spirit. All right. There is a supernatural dimension of the spirit that must begin to take place on the inside of our hearts. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? I know without a shadow of doubt, something is about to happen. If you and I will allow the Holy Ghost to work deep inside our hearts and, and begin to bring something deep inside and you can see it and you can work together with it and allow that, that water to become a well and that well to become a river and that river become rivers, then you are ready to start to minister. Your capacity will continue to increase. If you have water, it's only good for you. If it's a well, it's good for them. If it's a river, it is good for the city. It is rivers, it's good for civilization. God will extend your boundaries and your reach will be further 
and further and further water is only for you well is for them a river is for the city but rivers will affect generations to come further and further it will go as far as it reaches out to the sea are you with me and wherever the river grow the trees are planted by the streams will begin to bear fruits but you see that freeze around about that river the bible talks about that river was unique because every month they bear the fruits are you listening to me every month they begin to bear fruits it's not just once a year or six months once but every month is like one year are you with me there's an acceleration of time that will begin to take place instead of one year it will be one month what do you take one year to do you can do it in a month what do you take 10 years to do you can do it in in two years what do you take 50 years to do you can accomplish it in 20. that's that's the kind of thing that is going to happen on the inside that's why you can shout for joy because you discover something that you had never thought it was ever going to be possible you can shout for joy because even though you have no natural power to do it but yet in the spirit you can over overcome you can rise above and do things that you can never do before you believe that i said do you believe that that's why you got to learn to have this power of sight on the inside of our hearts can you say amen to that come with me to ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 ephesians 3 20 you and i must begin to capture this dimension amen this is the thing that will allow you not to become dependent on anything else. Stock markets can come and go. It can collapse. Nations can come and go and collapse. People can join you. People could leave you. You can have money. You can have no money. It does not make any difference why you live by the life of God on the inside. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me, who loved me, and He died for me. The faith is, is, is connected to the life on the inside. Are you listening to me? That's what, that's what it's all about. The faith is connected to the life of God on the inside. It's not connected to people's pockets. It's not connected to people's uh, resources. No, it's not connected to anybody else's resources. Your faith is, is stirring this life on the inside. The, the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me. Your faith is fixed on Christ. And that Christ who is inside you. That's why the just shall live by their own faith. You don't have to get on television and say, if you don't send money, I have to close my television down. Close the television down. Are you with me? You don't have to get up there and say, well, you know, folks, if you don't support me, I have to shut my ministry down. If you, if you have to be supported by everybody else for your ministry to run, then stop running it. Because it's not dependent on people. If God has given you something, God will continue to give us the increase and growth and the blessings will continue to flow. So that we do not bow to anything, so that we not yield to anything. We know God will carry us through. If He can save us from hell, He can put some money on our table. He can put some money on our pocket. He can put some food on our table. If God can take us out of hell, He can do much better than that. But our fear is unfounded. We want to do so many things, but, but, but I have to consider. No, there is nothing to consider except obedience. When your obedience internally is complete, then every disobedience outside will be dealt with. If, we, if, you're, if you and I find favor with God, you know what's going to happen? He will even cause his, uh, our enemies to be at peace with us. Even our enemies will walk down to us and say, we are sorry. We'll be at peace with us. Why? Because we have held the thing together well. Do you believe that? It's so important for each one of us to be able to capture things like this inside our own hearts. Amen. The power of sign. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Have we got it? But all that verses flow from verse 1. All right, but I'm not going to open up verse 1, but I'm just going to go maybe first in verse 7. Let's look in verse 7 first. Ephesians 3 verse 7. Of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given to me according to the working of his power in me. Have you got it? In verse 7 what does he say? That God works by his power on the inside of us. Are you listening? So God works on the inside. So the power of God is working on the inside of each one of our lives. And what is it to produce? It is to produce grace. And that grace is to make us a minister. How many want to be a minister? According to God's word? Do you want to be a minister according to God's word? 
And you are not made by the environment. You are not made by Bible school. You are made by how God works on the inside of us. That's why a lot of people are trying to be so many things. They don't allow God to work deeply on the inside of them. Are you listening? They don't know how to allow God to work deeply on the inside. Here we can see this, that God is working deeply on the inside. What is he to produce? To produce grace. So first, according to the power that works in us. Then, according to the grace that breaks out from that. And that grace is what makes us a minister. Are you reading the verse? Are you in the same verse of scripture that I'm having? All right, let's read it again for those of you who don't know how to equate it. All right, if two acts is 10, acts is 10 over 2 is 5. Just say yes. Okay, I know you feel your algebra. But let's look in verse 3, verse 7. Of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace. So you are made a minister by the grace of God. But where did this grace come from? It came from God working deep inside your spirit. And when he, God works in your spirit, he produces grace for you. And it is this grace that is going to make you a minister. If you want to be effective in doing what God has called you, then God must work inside you to produce that grace that will be sufficient for the task. Then everything he wants you to do, you are able to do it. Don't say, I can't. No, I don't think I can. I, no, yes, you can. You're depending on your personality. You're depending on your ability. You're depending on your niceness. You're depending on your works. No, it's not about your works. When you cross the video, keep your heads down. Humble yourself as you go through the gates of heaven, all right? Or else the people's, those of you are going to the restroom, you can, you're allowed to go to the restroom but you're not allowed to block my face. All right, because that's the that important face. People buy the video for that face, not your head <laughs> that is passing by. Okay, all right, I've got myself clear because the video guys have been trying to get this message across for those of you who are traveling in transition, the so sojourners of your journey. All right, I don't want to stop you in your journey, but please keep your head down. Now, this is what happened. The, the power of God must work on the inside of us. Can you say amen to that? And it is that power that produces grace. And it's that grace that makes us a minister. Can you say amen to that? I want you to say this statement so that you can remember. When God works, say aloud, when God works deeply in my spirit, he begins to release grace. Grace will make me. I am what I am by the grace of God. It is a grace of God that is sufficient for me to finish the task grace makes me grace enables me grace equips me grace empowers me by grace it shall be accomplished see grace is god's divine enablement in our lives but how does he enable you how does he make you able first he works inside your spirit the water that i give to you shall become in you a well of water are you with me? So the water Jesus gives, he doesn't have to give you anymore. Oh, come on. I said the water that he gives to you, you have learned how to grow that water until you begin to have it as a well. You know how to nurture this water until it becomes more and more and more and more. And that is how does that happen? The water is going to work in you. What he's speaking to you is going to work in you. The life is going to work inside you. And he, this he was speaking about the Holy Ghost. That's why whatever God called you to do, you will be able to do. If he wants you to go into the jungles of South America and reach a tribe, you will go in and finish the task. You know why? Because you are enabled. You don't need a missionary organization to tell you whether you fail or you pass. No, you fail or you pass according to what God put you on the inside. You fail because you don't know how to tap it. You fail because you believe in everything else except what God has put on the inside. But the day you believe what God has put on the inside of you, you will rise up to the occasion. You will rise inside. When God will arise on the inside, his enemies will be scattered. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. That's why you can do a work anywhere without anything. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. You can do a work anywhere without anything. You know, when I came to this town, I had no money. I had no support. I had one motorcycle 
and a plastic bag of clothes. Not even a bag, but a plastic bag of clothes. And these were all second-hand clothes. I came in here 27 years ago. I, walk in, I came into this town. And the Lord said to me, this way I want you to, from here you will reach the ends of the world. He told me about the nations of the world being reached. I just arrived. There was not even a church. There was nobody. I had to look inside. This is going to go to the nations of the world. This is where the church is going to come from. This is where nations, sons and daughters are going to come from out of this life. I look at my own life. You know, consider myself as one day. There was, I didn't even have a wife. How am I going to have seed? How, how am I going to have sons and daughters? I just started out in ministry. I was young. I didn't know how to preach. I've never been to Bible school. I don't have anything. All that was there was God's word. I had to believe God's word. I had to see my future inside here. I have to capture the future. I have to nurture the future. I have to live the future. I have to go to the outside and begin to evangelize to the people. Come to my church. They came to the church and said, where is the church? It was inside me. I have to put hope in their hearts. So let them know that I carry a church that I carry a hope for their life that I have the future for them I have to prove to them that it is possible I have to show them that there was a great future if they follow me and where was the future it was inside here I have to live when people left me I had to encourage myself because I saw those things and I began to sell my vision and sell my dream I didn't sell my vision by putting say well we got to have 62 people by end of next year no that wasn't the vision it was my life it was inside me the vision was not an external church growth the uh, faith projection it was my life it was everything that God had put inside me I said if you join me this is what your future will be like and those who stayed saw it those who have lived have partaken of it why because they believe what came out by the inside by the life of God on the inside I had nothing to prove to the world I have nothing to show that's why until today I don't try to show anything why because it's not their business that I'm for me to find any approval before them Paul said of all the apostles that were before me I'm not inferior they did nothing for me neither did I they did anything to push me up or lift me up in fact the, they were so afraid to receive Paul into Jerusalem it was Barnabas who took him by the back door and said hey he's okay I checked him out he's clean and finally they touched him and said he's okay but you better go you better go to the Jews we'll stay with our people you know, you, you are too dangerous for our people. We are, the, we are the ones it's easy to handle. I think the Jews can handle us, but not you. You better go to the Gentiles, the rougher crowd. You better go because I think you have grace for such people. Are you listening to me? So they quickly got, re got him out of Jerusalem because as long as he was in Jerusalem, there was trouble. So when the Paul was creating the trouble, the trouble was overflowing to Peter, James, and John. So the more they fasted, they got rid of him. So he started to travel out on his journey to Corinth and to Philippi, everywhere else. Trouble was everywhere else except in Jerusalem. Why? Because one man was creating chaos for everybody else. So they said, we better get him. Left right hand of fellowship and left foot of fellowship. Send him out quickly. Bless him and send him out. Why? Because he was really a troublemaker. Everybody was afraid. Even the church was afraid. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? It was too much fire for him to stay in one place. That's why he took three missionary journeys. Stayed in a few prisons. Broke a few down. Are you with me? He was too hot to handle. A few shipwrecks. Even the ship could not handle him. Are you listening? That's the kind of man he was. But what did he have? He had nothing. Everything he considered but done. But all he lived by was by the excellency of what was carried on the inside of his spirit. I'm telling you, the days are coming when you and I will have to learn to live by the life of God on the inside. I'm telling you, you know, sometimes I feel I can do it all over again. That's how I feel. If I go into another nation, if I go into another place, I can do it all over again. Because now I know how to tap it faster, quicker. That's why every now and then I tease the people in the big cities. I say, if you guys don't wake up in time, I may come into your city and start a war. And that's no, no, not a threat. And sure enough, God gives me sons and daughters over there. And the moment he gives me sons and daughters, I use them. So the sons and daughters, sons and daughters, and, and father and sons and daughters, we go before the enemy at the gate and negotiate. Keep the enemy outside the city. Are you listening? Yes. What I can't do, my sons are doing. In fact, they are doing it better because nobody knows what's happening. 
They are already among them. So nobody can stop me in the nations of the world. Some people say, well, you know, uh, God has a specific time. I think your time in this country is short. No, every nation that I've gone is not short. The devil's life is short. The devil's work is short. You please do remember this. That's why in every nation we are taking permanent presence. How are we taking permanent presence? By having our own sons and daughters raised up in that place. We are planting the flag of the Lord Jesus Christ and everything that God has given here into every nation of the earth. That's why the power is on the inside. All right, come with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And now in verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundant, abundantly beyond all we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. To him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Now I want you to see an amazing thing of concept that Paul talks about. God who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all we can ask or think but it's according to the power that works within us. Amen. There must be something that you can see. It is working within you. You must see that. You must see how God is moving. How he is nurturing. How he is laboring inside. What is he forming? What is he shaping? That is your future. You got to see it. Are you listening to me? You got to see it. You got to understand it. But you see, whatever he is doing inside you. It's going to explode in the church. To him be glory in the church. Not only will he explode in the church, it is going to go from generations to generation. And not only is it going to go to generation to generation, but when time stops, it's going to go on forever. What God begins in you is an eternal dimension of God. So it breaks out in your life, inside you. Then it breaks out in the church. Then it breaks out in the generation. Then it breaks time. And not only is that happening, but he says, whatever that God is, God is going to do on the inside, the Bible says, now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all we can ask or think. Now what happens is if God works deep inside you, then now begins. I said, then now begins. That means every day you live is a now day. Now is a day of salvation. That means to say it will explode. It won't wait. If God is working inside your heart, there is no waiting time. It is now. Okay, I lost you there. I said, if God is working on the inside of your heart, it is not tomorrow. It is not yesterday. It is a now. Now, now faith is. Now salvation is. Now, today when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Every time that God is working on the inside, it's present, it is real, it is now, it is explosive, it breaks on the scene, it shuts out yesterday, it moves away tomorrow, it makes it happen today. And that's what's going to happen. But you see, what will happen? God, who is able to do, will manifest. If God is working on the inside of you, I'm telling you, he's going to manifest outside. But the more you allow him to work, the God who is able to do, will do. Are you with me? It's not a God who is invalid, a God who is, who is weak, a God who is sick, a God who is old. No, this is a God who is able to do, will manifest. What is the secret for that God to manifest? He must work deep inside your heart. If he is working inside your heart, he is going to manifest through you. Are you with me? He's going to reveal himself. Power of God is going to be made known. Far beyond all we can ask. Far beyond all we can think. Far exceeding whatever happened in the past. That's how our God is going to manifest. Now to him who is able to do. First, he must work mightily within us. Then he will mightily for us. It will explode inside our life. He will explode in the church. He explodes from generation to generation. He explodes and he will break time. Time will no longer be holding you back. Are you with me? What is going to happen when time is not hold, holding you back? Every day is a now. I said every day is a now. It's not tomorrow. You don't have to wait for tomorrow. Every day is a now day. Every day is a day called salvation. Every day is a day of breakthrough. Now is your breakthrough. Now is salvation. You know, an hour is coming and now is when men will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. An hour is coming, but now is. The hour that is coming has accelerated so fast, it becomes a now. Are you listening to me? How would you like to have life like that? Do not say that yet four months and then come harvest. Lift up your eyes and see four months have already come forward. How would you like to live that? 
How would you like to live in a lifestyle where the harvest is coming forward to you four months in time? And your harvest, instead of you waiting for it, it is rushing towards you. Instead of you waiting for the answer, the answers were coming towards you. I'm telling you, that day is coming. But you see, for, for you to operate on that realm, you must be in a place where you get power of sign. Amen. Don't, don't lift up your eyes and see. It is already ripe for harvest. Don't say there yet four months and then come harvest. Lift up your eyes and see. The day is going to come, my friends, when your eyes will be so fixed in what God is doing inside your heart that you will not allow anybody to destroy this treasure that's in the earthen vessel. You know that this life of God that is on the inside of you is your hope, is your future. That's why your personality must not destroy it. Your thinking pattern must not uh, contaminate it. Nobody's words should destroy it. You have no, not allowed to allow the enemy to hurt you, frustrate you, wound your spirit. You've got to guard your spirit on the inside. Learn to carry it and rise in. And so that every aspect of your life is completely changed and transformed. Do you believe that? See, so you, you must guard this life. You must guard this baby. You must guard this dimension of God's grace and power that is going to make you and shape you. You've got no right to allow circumstances to destroy the Christ. Don't argue with the Christ inside the boat. Christ is inside you. Life is inside you. God is on the inside of you. Join together with him. Partner together with him. Labor with him. Tarry with him so that you don't enter into the hours of temptation. But you stay together with him and stand up together with him and push back the storm. The storms will listen to you. Why? Because you and God are majority. You and God will bring up down every work of the enemy. Every struggles around about your life will come to an end. I'm telling you, this is the reason why you need to know the power of sign. I want you to stand to your feet right now. I want you to lift up your heart before him and begin to allow the Holy Ghost to do a fresh new work inside your spirit and say, God, I want to know this power. I want to know this life. I want to know the dimension of God deep on the inside of my spirit. I know that you have called me. I know that you have called me. I know that you have graced me. I know that you have given me the grace to rise up to do what you call me to do. Father, I thank you for supernatural grace. Oh, come on, lift up your hearts to him. Lift up your voice to him. Lift up your spirit before him. Stir up your spirit in the most holy faith. Because God is about to do a new work. He can do it all over again and again and again and again and again. The water that God is going to give to you shall become in you a well. And it shall become a river. And it shall become rivers of living water. Changing everything in the environment. Oh, see what's on the inside. See what's on the inside. Life is on the inside. Come on, come on. Lift up your heart and thank him. Lift up your heart and thank him. Lift up your heart and rejoice. Lift up your spirit and rejoice. Oh, we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts, Lord. Oh, we thank you. Oh, thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Spirit of God. Thank you for what you're doing in our spirit. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come on, come on, allow the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you right now, we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, our lives will never be the same again. Our lives will never be the same again. 
We have life on the inside. We have God life on the inside. Shiri and Baba. Oh, Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Shiri and Lama Shikiri and Oh, Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Come, Lord, even this day. Come this day. Work upon our hearts and turn our lives around afresh. That we will never be the same again. Lord, we will never be the same again. We are made according to your likeness, according to your, to your nature, according to your order. There is a new order of life on the inside. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You believe that? I said, do you believe that? Yes. We will live, but Christ then liveth within us. It's the life of God that's on the inside. We learn to live by that life. There's nothing you cannot do because that life defeated Satan. That life defeated sin. That life destroyed the power of death. If you live by that life, you can live by the higher life rather than a lower life. A lower life is to live in the ment mental state of your past. You evaluate yourself according to the old order. The Bible tells us we're not supposed to think this way. We're supposed to think of the life of God that's on the inside. Set your mind on the things of the spirit. What is inside your spirit. Amen. And that's why this is, this is important. I'm telling you, you cannot live and be a minister if you don't live in this. The enemy will push you off the cliff. You'll be unnecessary pressure. Even as a Christian, you cannot live this way. If you learn to live by this, you can do anything that God wants you to do. Amen? Whether you have money or no money. People talk to me about their trouble. If I tell you my troubles, you'll be depressed. If I tell you my life, you'll be thinking you are fortunate. You don't know what I have to go through in my life. I had to learn these things. A high price I had to pay for you to get it so easy. Are you listening? a high price to pay to make this thing become easy so for, for, for people to begin to pick it up this thing so easily so freely but our lives will never be the same again this is why we must begin to see things in a different light amen it's God's mercy that he's brought you here to save your life to save you to give you a hope and a future so that you don't have a future according to this world there's so many people who just do everything they want to do with their own lives and they don't bother whether it's God or not, they just backslide or do whatever they want, commit themselves in all kinds of sin, and they think everything is fine. But I'm telling you, things are not fine. If God take his hand away, you'll be dead. There'll be no hope, no future. But he's giving us a future, giving us life. What a day it's going to be. That's why the nations of the world are going to be blessed. Because of you. In you. This is, this is the blessings of Abraham. That the blessings of Abraham may come upon the sons of Abraham. What is the blessing of Abraham? In you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. We're not just talking about you having a ministry. We're not just talking about you having a good job or just it just blessed your own family. No. In you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Every tribe, every kindred. Can you imagine that? I said, can you imagine that? Because you must see it inside your mind. I said, can you imagine that? Close your eyes. Close your eyes and imagine that. See that inside your mind, that you are God's choice instrument. Are you listening to me? Yes. Talk to me. Are you listening? Yes. You got to see. Close your eyes and begin to see that you are affecting your neighbors. Every person that you know, every person that you, that you can see, every family member, every relative, every, every person out there, you are affecting them, transforming them. God is using you to change lives of people, your husband, your wife, your children, every person who is connected to you. You are affecting them, influencing them with the grace of God upon your life. It starts with you, my friend. That's the blessings of Abraham. It starts with you and you will never end until you finish the course. Full cycle until everybody is changed, transformed, healed and delivered. From you, to, from, from you to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? I said, can you say amen to that? What a day is going to be like. He said, the water I give in you to you shall become in you a well. So you drink water, but it's going to become a well. So whatever God gives to you, nurture it, grow it until it becomes a well. Then you build a proper fortification to keep, contain what God gives to you. So many people are careless. They come to the school of prophets, they receive so much, but then they go and squander everything. And then they say to me, what's happening? Why what you say didn't come to pass? 
I'm no liar. Liars cannot carry what I said. You just got to be truthful and learn to live this way. You know, people said to me, wow, you know, so many things have happened since I last met you. It won't happen, my friends, if I've been living a careless life. We won't be where we are if we just take everything and we destroy it. You know, people have come and gone. I've met pastors at my, at my level. We started off in ministry together at the same level. Many of them were ahead of me. Today, they're asking for help. Why? Because they don't have what God had put into our lives. He will not allow them to last. The enemy put a lot of pressure. So many of these people are everywhere. Listen to me, friends. You will have more children than the married woman. This is not natural, so don't worry. It's spiritual I'm talking about. I'm thinking like, oh, one was enough. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the natural. I'm talking about some real stuff that's going to come out from you. How many of you can see that? Can you see first a water coming to you? This is two weeks. Water is coming to you. Amen. Then you are responsible to ford this water and make a well. So that you use it to feed others. Amen. And then once one day is going to happen when you're ready, it will become a river. The river, the walls will break and it is going to go touch others. It's going to go to the city, affect the city. And then from then on, the Bible says, what well, rivers of living water. And when it's rivers of living water, it breaks out in many tributaries. It will go in many directions and civilizations are all around the river. Out of one life. Out of my life, hundreds of thousands of people are being affected across the world. You never thought it's possible, but it is. You never know in 20 years from now, if you're affecting as much as I'm affecting from now, in 20 years' time, blessed are you. Because I know what we are doing. We are doing all kinds of major work across the nations of the world. Are you listening? If you can do that, in 20 years from now, do everything that I'm doing and accomplish. You can kiss goodbye to earth because you've done well. Because God has done some amazing work in our lives. Amazing, amazing work. And that's why I'm eternally grateful that I learned this not of man. But I learned this clean so that I can teach you as it is without contamination. You can change your world. Amen. We don't have to let the enemy throw dumb mud to us and then we take it and try to cope with it. No, no. We want the world the way God made it. And we're going to have the world the way he intended it. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God for such a message. The power of sight. You know, messages like this is for us to spar. If you, if you and I begin to understand that the, the message is an expression of the activity that's happening in the supernatural. It is, not the, it is not the message alone, but you can feel the intensity. You can feel the heart of God. You can feel the, 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 the tenacity in the spirit world as this message comes to us about the power of sight. You know, this, this uh, a dimension, I believe, this message is a dimension. This is the dimension that has made who Dr. Jonathan is, who Papa Jonathan is. And this kind of messages is for us to spar. Whenever a boxer is going to go into the ring, he has a sparring partner to make sure that, that his jabs are accurate, his, 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 his punches are, are strong and take the punches. So I pray that you and I will use this message, the power of sight. Wow. What a classic, what a classic, spoken many years ago, but it now it's still fresh. Why? Because the things of the spirit are always fresh in the supernatural realm. I pray that we take this divine activity and make it a reality and make it a reality in every aspect of our life. I find that one of the, one of the challenges that Christian, Christians have is that they take messages and put it into a spiritual box. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said, I come to give you life and life abundantly. You know, and that life is every aspect of our life. I pray that the power of sight is applied in every aspect 
of our life. I pray that this week you have an amazing week as you take this message and as you begin to open the, the sight that God has given to us, the perspectives that are divine, that must come into our life and let it become a reality in every aspect. Every revelation must become a reality. I pray this week for your family. I pray that everything that is around you, you and I will have the power of sight to see to see what? To see Him in every aspect of our life, every day, every step of the day, every step of the way, and every way, and every possible minute of the day, may God be with us as He gives us the power of sight. God bless you. Have an amazing week. And until next week, we'll see you at the top. God bless you. Bye. Thank you.